What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Goats and Gods. Sorry we're late. Um, Logan, dude, I had my hand on the, I had my, I, I had the, the cursor on the button to just go live because we were waiting for you, and then I was just gonna. Fuck it. I was just gonna go. <laughs> um, how was your play date? Yeah, it was good. Uh, I jumped on a call with Dwag, and uh, we were talking about how to market myself better and stuff like that. So it was good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope you're willing to share with the class uh, when when we're done here, because we would all like to do that. I mean, we all yeah. want to have the absolute legend uh, that is Dwag. Oh, that's nice. He he wrote you a note, <laughs> um, <laughs> so you wouldn't get in trouble. That's very nice. Hail to Dwag. I have, hey, a, I have cool, a teacher's man. note. <laughs> so what's going on? How's everybody's week doing? Doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Logan, how's the week treating you? I mean, aside yeah, from what we've covered. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. It's been pretty good. Cool, cool. Um, so for those who don't know, Damien is with New Take, New Take Media. Um, I have been on his show. Now he has been on mine. Um, Damien, when I was on your podcast, I think the first thing I asked you was like, Oh, what episode is this? And you said it was the first. So mm, yeah. I'm curious, how has the podcast been going since I was on? Yeah, we haven't really done one in a while, honestly, but um, I'm thinking of doing more. Recently, I've been focusing on some uh, video essays and a lot of that stuff. So that stuff sucks up a lot of time because they're like, you know, hours long and all that. But uh, I figured, you know, I want to cultivate my audience you know, I have a screenwriting background. We do films, comics, and games. So I need to cultivate an audience for all three instead of, you know, just comics alone. So I feel like video essays is a great way to start because people will be like, oh, this guy likes film. So do I, you know? Yeah. Plus, you can kind of demonstrate your competency, you know, by, by how you talk about the subject. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So you had done... Um, your it was your first comic book crowdfunding campaign, um, Grandpa, and my understanding is that you you had been you were working with an editor and like let's not mince words here, okay? The editor that you were working with is somebody who is just you know excessively handsome and talented. And do you want to just like tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know. Um... I hated working with him. Honestly, I think mm. I'm just going to fire him. <laughs> like I'm going to be real. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, I worked with uh, one of your hosts right here, you know, Mr. Joshua Plack here. And uh, guess what? It was great. He did a great job. I mean, he knows a lot about writing. And that is something that I noticed when I read his comics, actually. And that's why I came to him, because in my opinion, story is the foundation of everything, even in comics, because you can have a comic that has beautiful art, but if it has a shit story, well, guess what? People are going to read it and then they're not going to ever read it again. Mm. So I decided to have him come in to, you know, edit all of that and then to check that, check the art as well. So that, you know, there were no errors because, you know, once you print it, that's it. Damien, you, you don't have to lie. I know we have like a goats and gods representative there with like a gun to your head, but you don't have to lie about him being a great writer and stuff. <laughs> you can tell the truth. <laughs> so no, in man. addition to hiring uh, mentally disabled editors, like what else do you <laughs> like? What do you currently have? Like what's currently in the works at New Take? All right. So currently we're working on two main things, right? We have our horror anthology. It's uh, called World of Killers, right? It's five separate stories where they are all in one connected universe. So this universe actually connects to the grandpa universe, but uh, you'll have to read it to find out exactly how. Mm. Um, imagine a world mm -hmm. where all of the most iconic, you know, horror icons coexisted, right? Like Freddy, Jason, Mike Myers, Chucky, all of that. Imagine they were all on one canonical planet together how chaotic how insane that world would be and what parameters they would have for that world right so that's essentially what this comic is and i'm also making a prequel short film to the comic named akumu 
Um, that is going to be a psychological horror short where it delves into, you know, um, a, a drug addict suffering from withdrawal and she is forced to face her sins head on in a hellish reality. So Akumu is also one of the villainous killers in World of Killers. So that'll be one of the stories in the comic. So they both connect and intertwine and they're both canonical to each other. So, okay. I had a similar idea, only my idea was to have every character that Wesley Snipes has ever played <laughs> canonically in one universe. And it would the be Wesley like verse. Yeah, the Wesley verse. It would be like Jet Li is the one where they have to kill each other until there's only one. So you would have like Simon Phoenix. Um, you would have Nino Brown from New Jack City. Um, Willie Mays Hayes from Major League. You have all of these Wesley Snipes's is, um, fighting one another. <laughs> Sounds I didn't badass, have a question. man. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a question. <laughs> That's that the proper. A is that the proper plural of of Snipes? Is Snipes's? Snipes's, Snipes's yeah, yeah, Snipes's, yeah, it must be Snipes's. Snipes's. <laughs> but why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, can you give us a little bit of like your origin story? I know you talked about all the different things that you were doing, but like. One of the hard parts about going on somebody's show is you're answering questions and you don't really get to learn, you know, the other person's kind of story, like what, how they kind of came into this. Yeah. Were you bitten by a radioactive Wesley Snipes by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> I was. And, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, always creating my own mini stories, right? Like, I mean, every kid plays with action figures and stuff, but I was really heavy, man. Like, I would go in specific locations and make lore for that specific location for no reason. And I would continue the last story that I had from there. And it was funny because I actually made the concept of grandpa when I was like 10 years old. All right. <laughs> but uh, I developed it over time to what it is now. So there's a lot of beefy lore in it. It's kind of ridiculous. Um but yeah, no, I just kept building that over time. And then eventually at one point I wanted to make games. I had an interest in making games because, you know, I've played video games. I've watched movies and I've, you know, read comics essentially my entire life. So I had the drive to do it. And then uh, at one point I essentially said, you know what? I'm going to go full steam. I'm going to go full steam. Let's go. What's stopping me? No pun me, intended. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um I mean, I started a YouTube channel first, actually, called Farcom 4 Gaming, where I cover, like, comics, um, like Spawn Comics mainly, and I cover Walking Dead, and I do a little bit of, you know, game, game, you know, a little bit of gaming and game reviews, and I also do modding as well. So that's kind of how I got into game design, is I what, started What games are you modding? Fallout 4. <laughs> okay. So I'm essentially on a dev team where we're remaking Fallout 2 within fallout 4's engine so we're essentially mm -hmm. making an entire like open world rpg game it's pretty uh it's pretty like, intense like but fallout 2 remastered yeah pretty much is um but instead of it being like you know isometric and like overhead and turn-based it's actually like fallout 4's gameplay with all of the rpg mm -hmm. mechanics of fallout 2 so it's pretty yeah because awesome. fallout had kind of like a complete rework as far as like the genre am i understanding yeah. that right yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Did you want to show? Um, did you want to screen share? Let, let us uh, take a look at that trailer. And while you're doing that, I gotta say, I um, <clears throat> I started doing some more reviews and really diving into some indie comics lately. And like, without over over hyping, the story of Grandma is incredible. Like, as far as like the having a complete arc um it was one of the better indie comics i've read in a long time did you say Thanks, grandma man. yeah that means <laughs> grandpa but yeah close, close enough <laughs> i think i think he uh jp just made like the sequel to for your book right there he did yeah. right there grandma there you go there oh yeah you go. <laughs> no i was saying oh, grandma because i'm having a seizure <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll uh while you're doing that let's check on what's going on over here hail d -wag. I got Coleman in here. I was the one that, that got him in here. I, I blackmailed him good. Good. by telling him that uh, I'm going to draw him on stream eventually. 
it's the least you could do for you know for being late but it's yeah, it's fine <laughs> all right let me know when you guys are ready we're ready yep all right hopefully this doesn't lag so we'll see what happens all right three two one action Welcome to the world of killers, where the worst demons, creatures, and psychopaths coexist, creating a vast landscape of horror. Now, you can dive into its darkest stories. The Bloody Blade, a tactical task force of trained killer hunters, is sent after an unkillable slasher. Things do not go as planned. Flesh and insects. A colony of insects borrows their way deep underneath a woman's flesh while her husband tries to find her the cure. Intelligence in the void. Something waits inside of the blackest voids of the universe. Watching. And it's only getting closer. Kill a Quoka. He may be cute, but do not be fooled. This Quoka's killer. And also, there's a lot of big tits in this story. So yeah, <laughs> <Mark Humu. laughs> deep into he the sold mind, me on it. The world's most notorious serial killer, and watch as his reality crumbles around him. World of Killers, a new place of fear. Yeah, buddy. And I accidentally, I kicked Logan. Yeah, I got um, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Did that say killer thing. That's going to be everyone's favorite, Killer Quoka, I'm telling you. For sure, yeah. I like yeah, you, have I a, mean, you have a comedic story in there, too, I think. Because you're, you're taking advantage of the anthology thing. Like, it doesn't make sense to have an anthology if they're all pretty much the same the story. Same. But, like, yeah. exactly. really yeah. taking advantage of that. It's good. Yeah, each of these stories are pretty much uh, completely different. I mean, most of them are really dark. That's why I put that one in there. But, uh, yeah. like, like as you can see, the first one is a slasher story, more like Halloween mixed with, um, you know, Friday the 13th a little. But I like – see, with me, with my writing, I like to add a bit more depth to things. So it's more than just, you know, him killing everyone, even, like, you know, or something like that. There's a lot more depth to the story, and there's actually, like, a conflict behind it. Um, and same thing with the second story, you know, Flesh and Insects, where, you know, that one's going to be more of like a, you know – a dramatic like horror romance type of thing um body horror you know it's going to be really cool and then we have intelligence in the void which is pure cosmic horror it's going to fill you with existential dread kill a quoka is just pure fun you know <laughs> you're gonna have a fun ride with that as you can see and then akumu is psychological horror just like the short film will be Damien, yeah i definitely i'm, I'm could... feeling quaka <laughs> it's like a really think... bad b movie that you'd see exactly yeah that was what i was talking about anyway that. oh that's like it's like an australian uh, australian thing. animal yeah yeah <laughs> don't ask how i came up with that i just did i don't know <laughs> damien you, do you can think count that on you me would be willing to, to do pitches for b rows because like I, you're you you seem to be a natural at it you're you seem to be more on the noah end of the spectrum <laughs> um and i don't know if you saw b rose's launch the other night but no, he, i saw it i saw it he struggles yeah, yeah. Mo yeah. comes in here um, every week to tell us that he's leaving, um, but <laughs> still, it's still a, it's still a Mo sighting. So, oh fuck, Mo, thank you, <laughs> thank you for coming in anyway. He's just in and out, man. That's it. Yeah, we got a, we got a Mo sighting. An elusive so we're, creature. We're, yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's like a Kawaka. He's a Moaka. <laughs> So oh, where are you at with um, with Grandpa? Like as far as like the full, you know, the printing and fulfillment or the production, I guess I should say. Right. So essentially, I'm just waiting on the rest of the edits. Um, they're pretty much almost done. But once we get that, printing's gonna happen, and then uh, everyone gets their books, and we're all set. Essentially, uh, I have all the rewards ready. Everything's ready to be shipped. Literally, all I need is these edits done, and then I can send it to the printer. And we're all set. And it shouldn't take too long because I already printed a lot of stuff from them despite the paper shortages. Um, so they they seem pretty quick. So we should be all right. Hey, I'm Mr. Nuts. Kill That's a quarter. Good. Yeah, we, right. we don't uh, have uh, <laughs> we don't have Mobigs in here, but we have we have Mr. Nuts. That's good enough. <laughs> Mr. Nuts. <laughs> Mr. Nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Green Death is a um, a legendary uh, 
cinematic universe that I created, actually. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, those B movies that you were talking about? Yeah. It's essentially the, the, the ideal goal with it is to be so bad it's good. And that is on my Farkham 4 channel, F A R K H A M 4. If you guys check that out, you can check the playlist and you can see the Green Death universe. And uh, two's the best. So I suggest you watch that one last and you watch all the other ones before. <laughs> Do we have a, a mod in here to get his the link that he just said to get that in there or to get that in the chat? Let's see. Let's see. Could I send it in the chat probably? Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty low budget here. <laughs> we'll allow it all right all right let's see it's a tricky thing to like do the so bad it's good thing because yeah at a certain point it's like when when people can tell you're doing that it just comes crashing down oh yeah not in this <laughs> rick sailor asks is this book still in available is this book still available? So Grandpa will be available um, after, because I want to get it out to everyone first, obviously. And then I'll put the digital version on a website that I'm currently developing. And um, yeah, so you'll be able to buy it shortly after, along with pretty much everything else I create in the long run. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, I don't know if you, if you can do this or if this is a route you want to go, but I just put one of my older books up on cgnow.net um it actually went up there today so i don't know if you're inclined to want to do that but it is a thing that you could do if you have because you know how you have like extra you know you have over overruns when you um especially i think if you if you get a book printed perfect bound um they're just going to give you whatever you ordered but if you have you know stapled floppies um mm -hmm. they usually give you like a bunch of extra ones so that that might be something yeah to yeah, consider. yeah or ebay ebay is another good route right yeah no definitely um yeah because i'm definitely gonna have extras but i'm probably gonna put them in uh comic shops because i have okay. people who uh who want to get them so <laughs> so i'm probably gonna go to them and just be like here you go and then uh have them sell it in their shop because that'll be pretty sick there you go i got your link in the in the chat now all right, nice. Yeah, if you guys like the Spawn comics or anything like that, you'll like that. Uh, <laughs> you'll like that channel. So, what was what, what would you say, Graham? Uh, Gra or sorry, what would you say, Grandma was inspired by? Oh, it's like a million different things, dude. All right, um, Bioshock, Spawn, Lord of the Rings, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's like those three had a baby. <laughs> um, let us then move on to talk about our the subject for the evening. Um, our top five. Actually, shoot, Logan, do you have the uh, do you have the thing up to share the MS Paint? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, I'll share it. So the subject for tonight is our top five favorite animated shows of all time. Um. No directions this week. No, don't include this or don't include that. Just uh, whatever that phrase, animated show, says to you to put together your top five. So let's get into our top five. What? What? Yo. 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 This shit is actually trash. You guys get to see me mess around in uh, MSN again. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, what is your fifth favorite five, fifth favorite mm. animated show of all time? Hold on, I never have the list on me. Let me just pull it up. <laughs> uh, it's Teen Titans, uh, the one from uh, Cartoon Network a, a few years back. Not the, the not the Teen Titans Go one that they have now, but that that original one. Um, I don't remember what year it's from, like two thousand five ish. I want to say. Huh. I approve of this. I approve. <laughs> and <laughs> like, what was your, what was your, is it like nostalgia or is it like a show that you genuinely think is good or what's, what's the story behind this pick? Yeah, I, I did have, uh, have memories of it. Like, uh, back when it was still on air, uh, I remember liking it a lot, but I, I don't know. I, I, um, I watched it recently and I actually enjoyed it more than when I was a kid. I guess I've evolved into a man child. 
Mm. Uh, so I actually liked it a lot when I rewatched it, uh, even more so than as as a kid. Um, especially that episode where the Doom Patrol is there, because I don't know, I have an obsession with the Doom Patrol. Uh, I don't really know why. <laughs> okay, well, is is twenty six point the right the right font size? I mean, you can always type it in and then highlight it and change the size. Or you can just, yeah, just leave it small. <laughs> please Tiny. don't, yeah, I was going to say, please don't put teen tits in there. I really don't want the show to go down. <laughs> <the show. laughs> Speed, not PG anymore. Yeah, no, we wouldn't want that. The FBI will be coming over. All right. Ah, shit, the, there's a knock at my door. Say, yeah, say, you got him. <laughs> All right, Teen Titans. I'm, I was talking with uh, Damien before the show as to whether or not we're going to have a repeat. I think this is probably might be the most likely that we're going to have a repeat so i guess we'll see um my fifth favorite animated show of all time is uh harvey birdman attorney at law uh so i'm giving you a really long yeah you can just put harvey birdman and we'll, we'll, we'll capitalize the h because i know english there you go uh for me it's one of the funniest probably the funniest animated show of all time uh it was on adult swim back in the day it's going to be white in the background. Okay. Um, yeah, like, if you ever... I don't know if you guys ever watched it, but it was, like, machine gun jokes. Like, every, like not a single second of the show was wasted. You just had gag after gag and joke after joke. It was, like, back when Stephen Colbert was funny, you just hit, <laughs> like, every last mark. I, I don't remember that that age of Stephen Colbert history, to be honest. Dude, there was, there was legitimately a golden age for Stephen Colbert where he was on a half dozen shows doing voice work, Strangers with Candy, the Colbert Rapport was pretty funny sometimes, and then he just went right off a cliff. Like, he just became uh, the embodiment of not funny at all. Yeah, uh, all I know is that he's on that like Jimmy Kimmel level now, where like yeah, just Jimmy Kimmel really really too. bad political jokes all the time. Yeah, Damien, what is your fifth favorite animated show of all time? Oh, you guys ready for some weebery? All right, so wait, hang on, I gotta get ready. <laughs> I'm not actually a weeb, but oh okay, but, but this is kind of weeby. I ain't gonna lie. I would say my fifth favorite is Gurren Lagann. And the reason why what, is mainly what? how do you spell that? Like yeah, that? bro, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you honestly. <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking know. Just we'll leave, we'll leave it like that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think what is L, it? Though? I think it's L A G N. So it's essentially like these. All right, it's, it's hard to explain. I literally watched it like all in one sitting, but I think that's the best way to watch it. So these characters start in like like a freaking mine, and then they have to drill their way out. And they, they have these mechs, they have these drills. It sounds like the most anime thing, but they actually have like a solid arc throughout the whole series. And it actually has in a, like a really, really, really good ending. And just watching it in one sitting like that was pretty crazy. I mean, I'm doing a terrible job explaining it, but it's, it's pretty good. Like the way they make the characters change throughout the series, like they intentionally start over the top and silly and like your cl- like typical anime, and then it turns more serious as it gets as it goes on. So, so. it wait. So it is anime then. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Get a life. <laughs> <laughs> fair point. Fair point. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, that, that is kind of weebery. I haven't seen this. Actually, I haven't uh, haven't heard of that that show, but. Well, I guess we'll make a we'll make a pass for it this time. <laughs> the Weebery. <laughs> well, hey, you know, uh, next week we have. Um, oh, cool! Coleman's doing his own list. The real Ghostbusters is that? Yeah. Th- we always we always encourage people to to do that for sure. Make your own list in the in the chat. Oh shit! Bible Omnibus, he's correcting us. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spelled is it real right. Ghostbusters <laughs> the the nineties cartoon. I mean, I'm asking the air. Like, it's he's gonna be typing for a while. I don't but know. Speak- it, it it was before I was born, so I, I can't give any input on that. Same here, okay. man. Same here. <laughs> I wasn't around during no '90s. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, we need to get our Weebery out of the way because supposedly B Rose is coming on next week. And um, <laughs> oh, that's it. You're done. You're done. He's either coming on here or he was still like drunk and happy from his launch that he agreed to it and he's not actually coming on here. So we'll see. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I, I made him cry. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I think collectively we all did. Yeah. I, I remember I, I thought it was funny because I'm pretty sure like. As my message went up onto the screen, that's when he started crying. So <laughs> I was like, oh no. That was, that was the one that got him. That was like the realest shit, though. Uh, Dan, or Logan, what is your fourth favorite animated show of all time? Uh, it is. Uh, I put this one here because it, it's, it's not a good show at all, but it gave me so much entertainment value. Uh, he Man and the Masters of the Universe, the original one uh, from the, what was it, the 80s? Or is it the 70s? I, I cannot remember. I think it's the 80s. That's so yeah. funny, though, because like when we were doing movies, you hadn't seen anything. Like, stuff from the 90s, stuff from the early 2000s, but somehow the 80s. <laughs> yeah, look, I have the whole entire box set on DVD. Damn. Shit, man. Yeah, I'm obsessed hard. with that. that. That stuff is it's so fun and like like stupid, that, that old show. Um, yeah, man, they were just selling us toys. Yeah, all the characters like they they didn't really care like how outrageous and like dumb a character was. They would just put it in there anyway. It's like Stinkor, he was like an evil like skunk man. <laughs> like they just didn't care. If it was fun and it would make a good toy, then they were gonna make that character. I feel like it's just a really fun universe. Um, it kind of sucks to see what they're doing with it now, but you know Kevin Smith and the boys. But it was fun. So for my number four, um, it's going to sound like an anime, but it really, it, it isn't. It just has that kind of name that you would just swear as an anime. Um, but my fourth favorite animated show of all time is Eon Flux. A-E-O-N-F-L-U-X. Um, that sounds like an anime. <laughs> yeah, it does. I thought it was. Yeah. Um, oh, back in the day... MTV had like genuinely innovative programming, right? Mm. And they had this show called Liquid Television that was just like animated shorts. And there was this one about God, like I couldn't even tell you the show was like about if you asked me. It was just like futuristic. Honestly, B Rose, it kind of looked like uh had the look of like B Rose's comic, the Cerebrus. It was mm. it was a future, everybody was like Everybody was like skin and bones. They looked like bug creatures and there was all kinds of spy espionage shit going on. But at the time it was just like, <sighs> and I think it was around for like two seasons. Um, they made an action movie about it starring Charlie Theron. And that was terrible. Um, but it was just like some weird cartoon of the future um, and it was one of those shows where like the main character died at the end of half the episodes. So it was like really weird. It was just like, she dies at the end of the episode and then she's, it just picks right up. Like, like <laughs> nothing ever happened. <laughs> yeah. For some reason I thought, uh, like I've heard that name. I've never seen the show, but I, I've heard the name. And for some reason I thought it was like very similar to like Gundam. I don't know where I got that impression from. Um, maybe I'm just confusing it with something else, but that was my, my mental <laughs> like yeah, memory it was, that I had. It was just this weird time where you would have these experimental shows that just came out of nowhere and just disappeared out of the culture. Like <laughs> but left enough an impression on, you know, us kids that that it, it, it was enough to make an action movie out of it. Isn't uh liquid uh television, isn't that where Beavis and Butthead originated, I think? I think it was in the same block. Like it yeah, was I, like Beavis I and Butthead. Like the pilot was in there. Yeah. It was on that 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 program. Yeah. Damien, what is your fourth favorite show of all time? Mm, my fourth favorite is probably. Oh, you had to do a moan as you thought I'm, about it. I'm going to keep scamming you guys because I got a bunch of more weave shit coming for you. All right. <laughs> the next thing we got is Evangelion. So, even Evangel uh, Endless trash! Hey, listen, think, listen. That, that is the one I was thinking of, I think. I think for some reason I confused Eon Bucks and I, I could see why you would see it, yeah. No, this actually delves into the character's psychology pretty mm. good, and it has really good imagery. It uh, foreshadows really well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a solid show, man. 
I, I tried to watch like one single episode and it was very weeby. Uh, oh, no, it I, is. I didn't, it is. I didn't watch the second episode. It is. No, I can see why. I can see why. <laughs> see that? See that? That's cool. He respects you. He said it's, it's, it's based. It is. It is. <laughs> it is, man. I'm telling you. Look, I got those clips. I'm going to use them, all right? Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Logan, what is your third favorite animated show of all time? Uh, Batman Beyond uh, is my nice. my third. I, I heard someone in Comics Gate said they, they didn't like it. Um, I personally, I loved it. I thought it was pretty cool. It is very, very 90s oh, yeah. uh, and like early 2000s, but I, I just thought it was like really cool. And I love his costume. Uh, and like I, obviously, like Batman the animated series is the one that everyone points to and is like, "Oh, this is uh, Bruce Tim's best work." But um, I kind of I liked Batman Beyond better because uh, I guess I'm kind of a nerd for like futurism and all that stuff. So I liked seeing that kind of storytelling instead. Yeah, I guess you could say that like after Batman the animated series, like everything is just going to be in that shadow, like culturally. Yeah. Um, but I get it, you know. Yeah, it was like really cool, and the the music was pretty awesome too. There was yeah. a, a a phase in my life where I I would just listen to the the soundtrack of Batman Beyond while like doing anything. <laughs> I thought I had a really awesome like techno soundtrack. Squid Billies, dude, my favorite show, man. <laughs> Squid dude, Billies. The Adult Swim in those days was like, it was like living through the Renaissance for cartoons. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you're it's right, kind of right. garbage now. Oh no, yeah, not bit. even. Not even kind of um, my fa- my third favorite animated show of all time. I'm going back to MTV. I'm going back to the 90s. Uh. And it is the Max with two X's. Um, just it like ridiculously good art for the time. I mean, it's, it's from the comics, but like it That's captured that, that purple guy with the huge overbite. That's who that yeah, is, right? the Max. like it. That show captured, like, the art of the book, like, in ways, like, at the time, it was, like, like it was another just... Um, what, uh, what is, like, what is the Max's uh, origin story, and, like, what are his powers? Cause I've seen that character everywhere, his design, but I have no idea, like, what he actually does and, like, anything about him. So he's a, he's a homeless guy, and it's, the show is really about... Him and another character, she- or uh, Winters, she- I don't remember Julie. Julie Winters um, is like his social worker, and there's this place called what is it, the Outworld, and he's like a superhero there, and he fights this um, Mister Gone, and then Mister Gone, it turns out, is her uncle. And it turns out, like, it's really a show about people working out their problems, but it's just kind of painted over a superhero beating the crap out of people. You know what I mean? So it's just like, what? it's one of those things where it's like, what is real and isn't is kind of unclear from the show. Um, it was just like a really interesting way of of taking very, like, normal and serious people doing, you know, the prob- dealing with the problems that they have just kind of overlaying it into the, both the comic book and the animated show medium that it was just like mind blowing to me. And like it, like it really affected how I viewed storytelling. And so if you want to call that, you know, pretentious or whatever, hmm. I get it. But yeah, it was just kind of a Marvel, both for the aesthetics and the, and the storytelling. What Bible omnibus described in the chat with lifting to Batman Beyond's intro. That sounds actually amazing damn yeah, no it is man dude that dude that soundtrack goes hard dude. i got some some weights uh that i ordered off amazon i might have to try that out dude go ham go ham <laughs> that's like the best song of all time i'm gonna start running again soon because it gets so cold here that i can't <laughs> so in the winter time i just basically stop running and so the plan i develop for this year is that when it gets too cold to run outside i'm just gonna run around in circles in the parking lot like in the parking garage just go from one end to the there other Gotta stay jacked. You have man. to listen to that song. You yeah, have to put it, we have to run at the same time and put it on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Damien, what is your third favorite animated show of all time? Speaking and of banger soundtracks, 
Speaking of which, I don't know if this is technically, I mean, it is a TV series, but it's technically a film series, but it's kind of like, you know, it's animated. So Berserk, definitely Berserk. That's right. That's also Weebery, but I I'll let it, that's a cool Weeb show. That it is. Endless trash! That's right. That's right. Another based answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, I tried to watch like the CG one from like, uh, what is it, 2016? The like CGI one that they had. It was like a reboot. Um, it was pretty good. I, I feel like I really liked the, the character design of, of Guts a lot. Like yeah, usually really with with anime designs, I'll be like like too much is happening and like <laughs> it's like too colorful and weird. But I feel like with guts, he's just kind of like a universally like cool looking design. Oh yeah, like no. the big Especially, black armor. Yeah, his armor's sick. Yeah, <laughs> dude, the manga it gets it gets pretty nuts. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, and it has a lot of blood <laughs> as well, which I don't know why I, I tend to like things with oh. a lot of violence and blood. <laughs> oh yeah, if you like dark stories, that's your way to go. That's your way to go. All right, I can just leave this up here for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah, no, you might as well, dude. You might as well. <laughs> uh, Logan, what is your second favorite animated show of all time? Uh, I, I was holding my my tongue because I was going to say it's very similar to Harvey Birdman from what I know about uh, Harvey Birdman. Uh, it is the Venture Brothers. Uh, I love that that show. I think it's pretty awesome. Um. I like it's kind of like a, a satirization of the superhero genre, but I feel like it's done in a very creative kind of way. Uh, and a lot of like the characters um, are just very, you know, they're just really unique and, and cool, despite having like their origin in being a parody of actual characters. So one of the clips I have loaded here, I might as well pull it out now. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the Venture Brothers, um, you know how um, when a TV show premieres, like the pilot is like the worst, you know, it's like a shell of the actual TV show. Um, so this is just how good the Venture Brothers is. This is from the pilot. You can't enter the United Nations with that weapon. It's all right, soldier. Mr. Sampson is my bodyguard. Just the same, doctor. No weapons allowed. I'll have to confiscate it. Go ahead. Take it from me. What a masterpiece. Like, wow. the, the pilot was good, and I feel like the series only, like, kept getting better and better as time went on. And Adult Swim kept, like, giving it a bigger budget, so, like, the animation got better, and uh, they have so much freedom with, like, the writing. They were just able to keep improving and everything. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, a really good show. I'm going to rewatch it soon. It's on Hulu, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, also, they've been uh, the show's been around for twenty <laughs> years at this point, and I think they they take like five years, like every season, seven seasons. <laughs> yeah, like that, it's, yeah, it's two guys basically. It's uh, Jackson Public and Doc Hammer. Yeah, and yeah, they're allowed like complete freedom with it, so they just take as long as they want. <laughs> Apparently, it takes them like uh, I forgot. It's something ludicrous. It's like it's, like two weeks just to approve of like one frame of animation like they're that like hands-on throughout like the whole entire creative process so it takes them forever to do everything <laughs> do you know if they ever got the tv movie deal done uh, i have no idea uh, i hope so but i'm, I'm not actually sure Hail it's, it's it's a pretty awesome series all right well my second favorite uh animated show of all time there's nothing it's it's the McDonald's of animated TV shows, but I have to give it to The Simpsons. Um, uh, that is oh. that is straight the McDonald's oh, of, of animated I cartoons. I see. It's, would you like the new episodes? Uh, no, because that's okay. That would really be I'd the hope McDonald's. Not. Yeah, so I'd be like, that's they're, no, 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 It's no. so dead inside now. It's so sad. It it is, but um, the first nine to ten seasons, their the impact on. Everything from animation to the culture is you can't find a show bigger than that. And if you want a concrete example, then, you know, Bancroft and the inanimate carbon carbon rod, they're just these things that just became so ingrained and it's so quotable. And um, yeah, it's just nothing, nothing comes close to that. I think for a TV show for having that kind of 
cultural legacy and relevance. Um, yeah, first ten seasons are good. If I if I looked somewhere out there, um, I don't know why. When I was probably about like like five to eight, like that kind of age range, I would just draw Bart Simpson over and over again. I was absolutely like obsessed with his design. Um, I feel like definitely uh, Matt Matt. How do you even pronounce his last name? Is Greening or Groaning? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like definitely most cartoonists that you see around today are, are inspired by him because it had it did have a super huge impact, even though it's it's dead now. Um, I considered putting Futurama on my list actually, but I, I ended up yeah, not. I did too. Um, but yeah, I love that that show. That's that's probably my favorite one by uh, Matt. But yeah, Simpsons is good. It's designs. Yeah, it's basically like no matter how terrible and no matter how much I want zombie Simpsons to end. Um, nothing they do can erase what the first nine or ten ish seasons, you know, accomplished. Yeah, I feel like a show that is kind of similar, but like better in every way is Bob's Burgers. I was also going to put that on my list, but I ended up not. I don't know if you've seen that. That's also on Fox. It, no, I have a gene. I have a gene like tattooed in my arm. <laughs> when I went yeah, to do I my list, literally all I had to do was like look at my arm because I have like Simpsons, Futurama. Uh, Bob's Burgers. I have Brock Sampson on my shoulder. Um, I ha he's fighting the Max on my shoulder. So, yeah, I, I I cheated a little bit. I just looked at my arm. That does sound pretty awesome, Brock Sampson fighting the Max. <laughs> uh, Damien, what's your second favorite animated show of all time? My second favorite, although it was cut short, unfortunately, would have to be the Spawn animated series. And the reason why is because... First of all, it has a great mix of horror and noir, and it also has amazing dialogue, even for the 90s. Like the way the dialogue, you know, flows and the way the voice that like the voice acting is amazing. And um, the story is very similar to the Spawn comic series, but they adjust things to, you know, mesh well better with the times and they make it darker and they actually make it, you know, less cheesy, which I think improves it a lot. So. Yeah, love that show. Spawn was always one of those characters that I really don't know a lot about, but I've always thought his design was super cool, and I've always wanted to like learn more about him. But I don't know why I've never put in like the the detail or like the 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 time to actually like find out more about his character. Yeah. All I know is that he's like a demon, which is why he's called Spawn. He's a hell spawn, and that he fights the forces of both heaven and hell. But I, I don't know anything else. About just go on that. just go on farkham 4 man you'll learn real fast Jeez, you trust me. <laughs> I shall. i'm gonna go check that channel out later all right the the spawn animated series is something i had no idea even existed until like like this very moment oh wow um, <laughs> is it before or after the movie i heard about it in passing once well no i think it's i actually don't know i think it's after but it is nothing like the movie. <laughs> the movie's kind of garbage. I ain't gonna so, like, lie to you. So, like, John Leguizamo's not... <laughs> no, no. I it's heard not... that the movie is terrible. The only oh, scene I've, I've, I've seen from it is uh, some really bad CGI monsters. And also yeah. when, um, is his name The Violator? The Clown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, pulls out his underwear and he has, like, crap on it. He's like, skid box! And he's, like, showing it to some random guy in the street. Yeah, the comics <laughs> and the, the show is nothing like that, by the way. <laughs> but uh, the movie is a fun ride, I guess. Not really. It's kind of torturous. But literally, like, so Mal Bulgy is, like, the demon lord. He's, like, the devil guy. It looks like a PS1 cutscene. Like, it looks so bad in that movie, man. Uh, and it, apparently it was because the director was like a dude who was like a VFX artist. So mm -hmm. he was like, oh, I don't care about anything else. I just want to go nuts on the VFX. So that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in the theaters and it was the worst CGI <laughs> I have ever seen in my like we were talking about uh, when we were talking about movies. And I, I had said that Terminator 2's effects, this, it's so good that it still holds up like it still looks yeah. like it was made today. Spawn is at the is the complete other end of that spectrum. Like it yeah. looks so bad that it's it's shocking. Like we find out so many different things, like like questions that people don't want uh, answered. Really, like they they never thought that they needed an answer to. Like now we know that Terminator Two and Spawn, the movie, are like complete opposites of each other. Like they're, yeah, they are the the pinnacles of bad movies and good movies. Mm, no, now definitely. we know that. I mean, I think the biggest issue is uh, Spawn tried to do all VFX 
especially in that time where they were more limited. Whereas Terminator, yeah. they mixed the practical. practical with the, yeah. yeah, they mixed it both together. So they did it really well. They were smart. <laughs> I would say that PS1 is that's even that's too much of a compliment, compliment. for Spawn. <laughs> like it's like Nintendo 64 level. Yeah, no, it's pretty <laughs> close. You're right. You're right. And you know what? I'm I'm getting pissed off because Spawn Spawn pisses me off. Like the movie is so fucking bad. But what, yeah. what pisses me off about it is that the actor whose name I don't even remember, um, that was like his shot. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Michael Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Dylan. Yeah, uh, Dark Knight, Black Dynamite. Like that was his big shot, mm -hmm. and it was a movie that was so bad that like even Michael Douglas, is it Michael Douglas? What the actor? I know yeah. no actors. So. No, it's Michael Jai White. No, 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 no. the uh, Michael. Damn it! Which one? I don't um, know all the actors. The one to who be betrays honest, him. Yeah, I don't know who plays. He was on the movie, or he was on the show West Wing. Uh, he played President Bartlett. Like Academy Award, Martin Sheen, that's who it was. Mm -hmm. Martin Sheen is in this movie. Like Academy Award winning actor, um, Apocalypse Now. Even, even he is terrible in this movie. Like the movie is yeah. just so bad that you have an Academy Award winner that is like cardboard. It's just awful. You know what's funny? That reminds me of like Amazing Spider-Man Two. Like you know, <laughs> you know, like you can have like the best actors. Like I would argue that Andrew Garfield is a very good actor. Oh yeah, but yeah. but like if you put if the writing is trash, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's like it's crazy. Is that oh. the one where Emma Stone? Yeah, breaks her neck. <laughs> yeah, I saw that scene and I fucking laughed so hard. There, I don't there's know like what. The that's found new life and like now on the internet like uh, if you go into like tiktok i hate everything on tiktok but there's like some really funny memes like reviving oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that like, like little clip of her like hitting the ground <laughs> 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 it's so funny yeah oh damn the special features in the dvd were better than the movie yeah, no, probably. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Aren't they making like a new uh, Spawn movie and it's taken oh, that, like, like that 10 ain't years? Happen. Yeah, that ain't going <laughs> to happen. Make. Bro, They're I heard like, of that when I was like 14 years still. old, bro. I'm 21 now, dude. He, like, I remember in 2014, he said, he was like, it's going to release this year. And I was so hyped. And then it never happened. And then he just kept saying that. It ain't going to come out. I Like, it's not. <laughs> Can you, Logan, can you believe is... that? That shows how much of an infant I look like, how much of a go. He's 21. He's a year older than me. And look wow. how much younger I look than him. I look like I'm 14 years old. <laughs> Logan, this is an important learning moment for you because when we talk about movies that are never coming out, mm -hmm. Avatar 2 is never coming out. Yeah, probably, probably not. Probably. <laughs> I've been looking forward to that since I was a kid, and it, it still it's not it has not come out. And no, I think probably. he said something stupid like that the technology – for like the water wasn't as good as they wanted like that sounds like a dumb excuse because like they had cgi water in the first one it looked fine yeah listen our water graph our, our water cgi and water graphics are fine nowadays trust yeah, me we I, have I look very, dolphin. yeah i look very vividly into that stuff especially with games trust me trust me that's like one of my biggest things i'm like the water has to look good don't ask why it just does you know i go like 8k water that's it you know <laughs> Living in All the right. future with the AK. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, what is your favorite animated show of all time? Uh, it's a newer one, but um, obviously everyone here being comic book fans, we're all familiar with his writing. Um, it was just really good. Uh, and I, I liked the comic books before it. So I had to put it at, at the top, even though it's a, it's a newcomer to it. Invincible. Hmm. Uh, on Amazon, mm. I made mean, seriously have it, it did have some like woke retcons. Like I think the character yeah. William in the in the books is straight, and then in the show he's like a really stereotypical like, oh stop it kind of guy. <laughs> Mark Grayson uh, is that the character's name in it? Right, the main character. I'm pretty yeah, sure. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he's like he's like Mark. If you want the girl, oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> in the show it's like he's like a lispy soy boy kind of gay guy um and his his girlfriend in it if you guys don't know mark uh the main character's girlfriend is terrible she's like like the sjw like interpretation of like a strong woman like she's horrible and has like terrible anger problems 
and for some reason is black. I don't, I don't know why she's white in the comics. Yeah, I haven't read the uh, comics. Actually, the only thing I've seen is the show. So yeah, so. like they did have like a lot of bad like SCW kind of like retcons, but for the most part, I would say overall it was a pretty amazing show. Uh, and that's also something I want to rewatch because I remember the first time watching it, I was like, the storytelling is actually like, really good and it's actually accurate to the source material, which is rare nowadays, obviously, um, for something to actually resemble what they're basing it off of in Hollywood. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. <clears throat> it's weird that um, I'm older. And so, like, I didn't even think I was just thinking of, like, all of the sources for where cartoons come from. Yeah, and I just didn't think of this. What's to me like such a new economy of streaming services making their own like um yeah what's that show Arcane? Yeah, everyone keeps telling me to watch that. I've, everyone, I've played the game it's based on, but yeah, I have not watched the show yet. No, everyone says that show's <laughs> amazing. I may, um, may say. I can't remember if Over the Garden Wall was a was an original to a streaming service or not. No, no, I think it was uh, Cartoon, Cartoon Network. Network. Yeah, but that was on my um, short list, by the way. There's, they're making a, a Halo show, and everyone thinks it's going to be super bad. And um, anytime that like I see a debate about it, everyone's like, they need to take reference from Arcane because that's a video game adaption. I actually did it right. This one looks like it's going to be super disloyal to the, the source material. So yeah, I always hear about Arcane all the time. Isn't Arcane from League of Legends? Yeah, League of Legends. Yeah. So a game with literally no story whatsoever. <laughs> like, how do you remain loyal? Uh, apparently, to that? it has a crap ton of lore, but the since they have like the I think it's called MOBA, the genre, like it's it's so limited the gameplay that like you wouldn't know any of the lore unless you actually like, went out of your way to go and look it up. Eric oh, and Ape is Eric he, he Ape, has yeah, a double sided well, a solid list <laughs> double double sided compliment there. It's not no, appreciated. I, I don't think it's the show. No, because I tried to watch the Berserk show from ninety seven, I think, and I really didn't like the way the animation looked. It looked uh, really I, weird to me. So I think I watched the remake like movie series. Like what you watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think that's what I watched. I also like I saw people saying that the new one was like garbage because they liked the one from ninety seven. So I yeah. went and looked up a clip and I hated the animation too. I was yeah, like, I'm no. not, I'm not going to watch that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. A lot of people are against that like CGI animation style. I noticed I'm like, it looks fine to me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I think it yeah. looks good. Yeah. It looks like a video game cutscene, but yeah, it's like exactly. a high quality one. It's like, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's all the, uh, all the diehard weaves. <laughs> I think. Yeah. That well, we're not, we're that. not weave enough. <laughs> They're like, you know, anime can only be 2d. <laughs> Need my 2D uh, hentai boobies. Are you getting one of those mouse pads, Logan? Uh, no, I have seen them around, though. There's actually a, a place at my mall that carries them. That's like... gross. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, what mouse pad? What are we talking about here? Oh, the, the one that's has... like, it looks like boobs, like, and has like an yeah. anime girl on it. Oh, have you seen nice. those? Yeah, it has yeah. like, like the silicone gel on it. Yeah, perfect. For maximum perfect. squeeze -ish. <laughs> Yeah, I think B Rose is adding that as an add on tier for his. That's a good idea, honestly. I should add that to like Killer Quoka or something. Yeah, it's like the the guy with like the cool like wrist blade, but it's like his butt, and he's like turned backwards. Like <laughs> that's the silicone part. Heroes <laughs> should do that. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> well, my favorite. Uh, I, I have a clip ready for my favorite. Um... Do, 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 do. Wait, what happened? The kind of privileges he's en he enjoys this as the, the person clip. running this the stream is the is, clip right here. <laughs> it's yeah. the black, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the black screen of... show. Did you get rid of the uh, MS Paint thing? Uh, no, it's still up. Oh, oh, there it is. So yeah, so I have a clip for my favorite animated show of all time, and here you go. You can't enter the United Nations with that weapon. That's all right, soldier. Mister Sampson is my bodyguard. Just the same, Doctor. No weapons allowed. I'll have to confiscate it. Go ahead. Take it from me. Yeah, so it's the Venture Brothers. Uh, okay. Venture Brothers is my favorite animated show it? of all okay. time. What's that? I had to reshare it. Uh, it. It randomly decided that it, it did not want to share MS Pay, and I went to a black screen show. I had to, <clears> had to nice. redo it. I'm, um, I'm working with MS Paint pretty okay this time. Yeah, that's a good choice. Because <laughs> uh, Venture Brothers is pretty awesome. We finally, uh, we, I don't think we've ever had like a common thing on one of these lists. So. No, this is our first repeat. <laughs> um, 
So for those who don't know, since I can only, I can expand on 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 Logan's take on it, um, it was originally a parody of the old um, Johnny Quest, I think Johnny Quest cartoons from like yeah. the the 60s and 70s. Um, at the end of the first season, they kill the Venture Brothers, um, and then they have to find a way to bring them back. So their dad's a super scientist. So and they're, uh, they're clones. They're, they're clones. <laughs> yeah, but they like they tease out all these different solutions that it could be. Um, and it just ends up being that they're clones. And then from then on, like the show just takes on a life of its own. The animation like jumps up in quality. They start yeah. developing all these like awesome storylines and memorable characters. Um, there's only like three or four voice actors in the entire show. Um, and <laughs> it's true. I noticed that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not even good. So so Dr. Girlfriend is like um I think Doc Hammer does the voice of Dr. Girlfriend, and then you hear the same voice throughout the show. (laughs) Oh, sweetie. Saving on the budget, man. Putting it into better things. Uh, Yeah, so 20 years, seven seasons, and I think an HBO Max movie is in the work. Um, Jackson Public recently tweeted out uh, just a picture of the front page script. Um, Yeah, the henchmen were brilliant. Yeah, they were. I like the two. They they killed off one of them, but I like those the the duo of henchmen that they had that were always yeah. like featured prominently. I don't remember their numbers, but yeah, twenty one like and twenty four. Um, twenty four. So I have a beard, but whenever I like look at myself and think about it in the mirror for a second, I remember him saying like, "And here's just a tip: a beard is not a substitute for a jawline, no matter how you trim it." Because he just sounds like a really bad Ray Romano impersonation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and didn't they say that in one of the episodes? Like, who, who's the one? Uh, yeah. It was a monarchy. It's like, who's the one that sounds like Ray Romano? Oh, it sounds like Ray Romano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that show's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Damien, why don't you take us home with your favorite animated show of all time? All right. My favorite one is Nara. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Nara. It's not... <laughs> no. no, it's uh, Batman the animated series. And the reason why is because not only did so many amazing things spawn from this, I mean, you got Batman mask of the phantasm, uh, Mm -hmm. like there's, you know, obviously the justice league animated series and all that. Like there's so many amazing things that were influenced and that stemmed out of this, but Kevin Conroy is Batman. Isn't that the first time he came as Batman, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And Mark Hamill, I don't think voiced the Joker before that. Yeah, exactly. So two icons right there. Then you got great stories in there. A lot of really iconic moments for Batman. Yeah. Um, and also, I think it's my favorite iteration of Gotham. Like, I love when Gotham is that actually gothic style. You know what I mean? And they instead did nail of, that, yeah. Yeah, instead of just like this like modern city. Like, I feel like too many things do the modern city. I like the Tim Burton style gothic like you know dark noir style of yeah batman. what is it called uh art deco i think is the is the style that they're going for i think they call it yeah something like that yeah and yeah uh, they did like, really nail that atmosphere yeah yeah it's great and you know yeah it's just it's just an iconic show you know so have you ever watched i think the youtuber uh his name is captain christian he did a video about the superman animated series and how like way ahead of its time it was but also how like influential it was on the on batman the animated series just in terms of like what you were talking about like the look of the city and Mm -hmm. how everything looked like um it kind of looked like old commercial advertising posters with just that you know huge buildings and yeah i think i think that's what they call art deco I, i think i don't know for sure you could yeah you could be right i don't know shit (laughs) <laughs> yeah no i haven't uh, seen that video but i could definitely see how that the superman animated series influenced that there's uh there's one moment in there i'm sure everyone has seen it when he's like bending around like a rocket or something and it's so smooth like it like it's like a turret you know thing and he like bends it around but the animation is so fluid it's like ridiculous yeah they really had a talented team working on yeah. that both animators and like voice actors yeah uh you know what? It's it's not it's it's Superman the animated series. It's not Batman. But um, have you watched the episode where Lobo is in that Superman? In Superman? No, I haven't seen. I haven't seen too much of Superman the animated series. Actually, I've just oh, seen should, like a couple. You should watch it. That's like one of my favorite like DC animated universe uh, things. Yeah, there's an episode where uh, Lobo 
is uh facing off against superman and they get they both get captured by like this this character called the collector or something like that and like he puts them in a zoo since they're both the last <laughs> of their species um lobo is what a zarnian and then uh superman's a kryptonian yep so, uh, so they both get put into there it's like a uh, last sick. species zoo <laughs> dude lobo's cool. overpowered man like dude you <laughs> yes. know how powerful lobo is man it's ridiculous it's nuts Oh. Yeah, I love Lobo. So, yeah, like when great. I saw him like pop up in in uh, Superman the Animated Series, just like, oh my god, I have to watch <laughs> this episode. I saw one comic. It was uh, Lobo versus the Mask, and the Mask is also really OP because he's got like two <laughs> yeah. force. He's got that like Bugs Bunny type of stuff where he can like pull whatever out of anywhere. <laughs> so it's like super engaging, and they actually like it was a pretty it was a pretty even match for the most part. But he couldn't he couldn't quite get the jump on the mask too much though. That's the thing, because, you know, the Toon Force is too OP, man. Jim Carrey is just too overpowered, man. Yeah, you're, you're, you're damn right. You're damn right he is. Canadian superpowers. Especially as the Riddler, you know? He's really good. <laughs> oh, God. That, that makes me... I, like, I the, can't the cringiest help. performance ever. It's so bad. And, like, <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones makes it almost... I think Tommy Lee Jones might actually make it worse, because, it's <laughs> like, Tommy Lee Jones is trying to keep up with Jim Carrey. Um... <laughs> And they go together about as well as like, like champagne, champagne and floor cleaner. Like it just, and they're trying to like, it's it's so bad. Yeah, we we got to get Phil Diaz in here. That that clout, we have to say Lobo three times. Oh, sh I'm just curious. Actually, what was the worst movie you guys have ever seen in your lives? Um, maybe JP can go first. I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of one. Oh, you know, it was recent. It was, um, and it was, I think it was produced by Guillermo del Toro and it was like a ghost. Hang on a second. Logan, you go first. I'll find this movie. Um, right now I can't think of like a, a specific movie, but there was a one, I don't know if it's the worst one I've ever seen, but it's a movie that a lot of people like, and I actually hated it. And like, by the end of it, I, I just so badly regretted watching it and I wanted the time back. Uh midsummer. It was just like the like the most disgusting, like Let's go! Let's go! I was like, I was like that movie sucks. I fucking do oh I listen. These artsy films need to cut their fucking shit. Listen, yeah. you have no plot in there. They're like, oh, we're so deep. You, you just can't understand us. We're just too intellectual. Uh, bro, bro, you don't have any plot in there. These characters don't have any beliefs in there. Like, don't lie to me. There is no story. That, that thing had no story. It wasn't scary at all. It was just dumb. It was just dumb. I, but whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that because pretty much put like any art house movie on there. Okay. I Dude, think that's what they call the genre. I hate no, those. Like where yeah. it's like, oh, it's all symbolism and there's just no story. Exactly, because that's what people do. Like they then then people make the video essays about it, right? And they have such loyal followers that their followers are like, oh, I just agree with what he says. And the guy makes up a total false, you know, <laughs> like a false, you know, conflict for what narrative, the, yeah. False narrative for what it is. He's like, oh, this is what it actually means. It's a metaphor for this. Like, get out of here. The no, lighthouse. That was another one like that. <laughs> yeah. We were we were discussing the other thing. That was another movie that made no sense whatsoever. And everyone was like theorizing on it. They're like, I think it, it's the what what's that 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 story? It's the it's the Greek uh demigod Prometheus or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. character. They're like, I think it's actually a representation of this. Yeah. Have you seen that the lighthouse? <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen that. At least with that one, I could uh respect at least their um visuals and the cinematography and the way yeah. it was filmed. And Willem Dafoe. Yeah, and Willem Dafoe. The acting was amazing. I like the as time well. period, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. definitely. It was cool, but as far as like story goes, it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, at all. it doesn't like, really make sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> he's like, it's mine up for was, interpretation. Um, <laughs> mine so I was right. It is a gear it's a Guillermo del Toro directed film. So yes. it's is it know, the shape of water? No, it isn't, but that's okay. also very weird. Um, no, it was called Crimson Peak, and it was that like sounds so familiar. A, I cannot horror uh, time period. That sounds familiar. Yeah. It does. I can't think of like anything like in my head of like what the movie's about, but like that does sound super familiar. Crimson Peak. It was like two movies. So in the first half hour of the movie, you have you know like strong female character who wants Boy. to who's an aspiring writer and um yeah her dad's like a really successful businessman 
And then this like con man comes in and th this is like where the movie just gets really weird. He swoons her and then they go off to live at his house far away and it becomes a completely different movie because it, they spent the first half hour setting up this character as being like, you know, independent, strong woman character. And then from as soon as they leave, she just turns into like a complete pushover, um, does everything he says. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so weird. Um, I've never seen a movie set up a character and then just chuck it in the dumpster and go like, well, we need her to be a complete fucking moron now. Like, for, <laughs> And then it just turns into like generic ghost psychological horror movie and it was like and it, it's so weird because it's Guillermo del Toro so it looks yeah. amazing like everything about yeah. the movie looks great it's just the dumbest story I've ever seen Guillermo del Toro speaking of him I, I really hated The Shape of Water as well that movie it was just like way too weird and like I, I don't know well like, what do you call it if it's furries but it's fish Scaly, I guess. Scalies? <laughs> a scaly? I don't know. I guess, I guess. <laughs> Weddies? Oh, Weddies. oh, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. <laughs> that's, we'll, have that... to, we'll have to ask B-Rose. <laughs> that's like what you use. Uh, oh, no, I just like said When you it... go to the bathroom, it's a little bit too messy for like toilet paper. You have to use some Weddies. General mm. Piggy, I just said in general. But in general, I would say, oh, for me, oh, there's so many. So the, the Fantastic Four, that was like... um. It had the black human torch and it had like, oh, yeah, that, oh. Mo that movie was bad. Garbage. Like, I literally almost like I was about to fall asleep. It was bad. I, I when, watched it in theaters. I was so disappointed. Like I usually like I watched it with my friend. Right. And what we like to do is we like to watch these bad movies to make fun of them. Sometimes we tried. We, it, I know it's a bad movie when we're like about to fall asleep. It's it's bad. <laughs> um nothing happened until the end and then dr doom got killed at the end of the <laughs> first movie he dies <laughs> like, what is that? Man. Wow. dude you know what movie is amazing suicide squad from 2016 best movie i've ever seen in my life dude it's like <laughs> good bad no or... no no it's terrible oh, okay. it's terrible but I like i much prefer the the newer one that they have oh yeah but, no one the yeah. new one's great but the that one was uh yeah not not their best moment but you know it's all right <laughs> it yeah. had like so much personality in the the trailers and then you watch the actual movie it had oh, yeah. no personality whatsoever Dude, i no was soul. like i remember when i watched it in theaters i wanted to like it so bad because i was like oh oh my god these trailers look so cool it's all these batman characters coming together this is gonna be so sick no nope. no nope. <laughs> yeah the, the suicide squad is kind of like the gingers of movies absolutely no soul at all yeah uh it's a lot of exposition i'll tell but you that, that wasn't the first time that like a comic book movie trailer was just like amazing amazing so when the um when the x-men 3 trailer came out that was like i watched that trailer on youtube like over and over and over again i was hmm. so unbelievably hyped for x-men 3 and then that was like probably the worst comic book movie ever made and i know that's saying something but like that has to be that has to be up there. It's, it has to be on the Mount Rushmore of just like just complete garbage. Which one uh, is the endless trash? <laughs> well, like which one? What is what even happens in that movie? I mix. I like merge all of them together. Is that the one where Jean Grey dies? Or which yeah. One is that? Uh, okay. Yeah, they tried to do the 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 Phoenix arc. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And yeah. <laughs> like okay, this is how terrible this movie is. This kind of summarizes it. Magneto is there and he sends in his, he's like, oh yeah, go fight or whatever. And he sends in <laughs> people. And then one of the guys standing next to him starts <laughs> to move forward and Magneto stops him and he says something to the effect of like, let the pawns go first, right? And one of the guys that he sends out his, I don't know what character this is, but he's just breathing like magma and just decimating these soldiers that are charging at him. Um, and I like then, to imagine that Magneto actually just said, go fight them or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to die. Um, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the guy that he stopped from going forward is the porcupine guy whose power is like, he has little little spikes that pop out. So like the most useless person imaginable. <laughs> Magneto is like, no, wait, you're really important to this whole operation. <laughs> Let the guy who spits magma at people go and get killed first. Like, oh my God. 
And then think... that whole the whole movie is a build up to this battle, and it's it's over in two minutes. Like no, it's it's awful. It is just the worst comic book movie. But this is the movie with the juggernaut, right? Yeah. He's like, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. My favorite line. My favorite line. <laughs> That's true. It was the first time that something from the internet uh, was featured in a movie. Um, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it a pretty good portrayal of the juggernaut, actually, considering how terrible the movie was? I don't Except know. It, 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 it didn't have, all, that, it didn't have all the supernatural stuff with like the gem of Cinerac and all that, but. I mean, what do you have to? What else do you have to go off of? I mean, for me, the best portrayal of Juggernaut is Marvel versus Capcom. I haven't played that game. I want to. Oh, you have Deadpool too, as well. He was in that for yeah. a little while. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't read enough Juggernaut comics to know. Sorry. <laughs> they, ne- they never delve into like what's actually cool about him in movies, which is like all that Cinerac stuff and all that, all like the artifacts and all that, yeah, that, that yeah. give him his powers. Because he gets his powers from like a demon. Like he has like, like an almighty demon. Like gives him like a fraction of his powers or something like that. But they never explore any of that in the movies. So it makes him kind of boring and like two dimensional muscle. Right. I'd say the best portrayal is probably from the parody of the X Men animated series, where where the I'm the Juggernaut bitch came from. That's probably the best portrayal. <laughs> Yeah, well, they make a lot of get out of my head. They make a lot of like beefy characters. Mindless, like Bane is one of them. Like yeah. if you read Nightfall, like that is not his character. He's like a strategist. At all. Yeah, he's like literally like one of those smartest Batman villains, dude. He's like freaking super badass, super skilled. And then like every movie is like Batman and Robin. <laughs> yes, yes, oh. ideal portrayal of Bane. That's it. <laughs> but like uh, I, I kind of Robin... hate Bane. I don't know if that's controversial. Really? He's What's too the... much. Yeah. <laughs> he's it's like he's like, oh, I'm the strongest and but also the smartest as well. I'm like, uh, you're too much. Like, get out. He's, I think the reason why Batman and Batman and Robin is I don't consider that worse than X Men Three is because Batman and Robin is definitely up there in that funny. So bad it's good. It yeah, is it's no, hilarious. It is. Mr. Freeze, dude. Come on. Come on. You, you can't I mean you can't deny it. it does have a lot of personality even though it's yeah, bad and it's, it does <laughs> it's really funny was that the one with the Batman MasterCard yeah yeah and, yeah, and the yeah. Batman <laughs> nipples as well the bat nipples <laughs> I also had that it's amazing man dude they do like speaking of this someone mentioned uh Silver Surfer earlier literally they like go down on like these surfboards off of like in oh, the beginning yeah. of the movie I'm like what <laughs> what is this and, and then um is, who is it? Uh, Robin kind of looks like Eminem. He's got like the like yes! buzz cut that's like yes! leashed in it for some reason. <laughs> he's literally Eminem. Oh, His palms think, are sweaty. I think D-Wag is telling us we have to we have to stop. Yeah, no. Go. <laughs> he Darren's made the show late, and now he's trying to end the show early. Yeah, he's sick of it, man. I mean, he's basically <laughs> he's our producer at this point, and I can't <laughs> I can't really argue with him. Um, so, Damien, I really I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a lot of fun talking with you. Yeah, um, thank you so much, man. It was a fun time. I like talking about all this Weebery and, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, link for Damien's channel is in the description. Make sure you sub. Make sure you hit the thumbs up here. Logan's channel is in the description. I My wouldn't Ko-Fi, really recommend subbing to that. Go give um, me money, Ko-Fi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's, you know, basically panhandling. Uh, we, we let him get away <laughs> with that. Uh, Noirlem is also in the description. We have a little less than two weeks left on that campaign, so make sure you grab a copy and a Zippo. And we will see you when we see you. Thanks, everybody. See you.